When I saw it a year ago, it was still a lot in layout and in storyboard form. So I sat with the picture department and the music department and just started getting some feelings on, you know, where the story was going and what was going to be developing. It's one of those movies that has a really strong, fun concept because you're playing with video games and you're playing with different worlds. If you had a clipboard that said parameters for a complete winner, you would just be going tick, 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 tick. Okay, so where do, you know, where do I sign? There's over 70 different locations in the movie, different uh, spaces that all had to be created and sound different and unique. So I started to think about it at that point and talk to the director and the picture editor and the dialogue folks about some ideas about creating those spaces and just concepts and things. So I had a, a pretty good opportunity to think about how we were going to design dialogue work and music work pretty early on. Well, the 8-bit sound is part of the fun. We had it in sound effects and Henry brought it in music and actually the coming together of those two worlds was part of the charm and the nostalgia uh, of the track when we are looking at it from a console perspective and we're looking at it from a player's perspective. I think people will be surprised at how well we can integrate a world from 30 years ago into a modern world. On a planet with no name, a top secret experiment has gone horribly wrong. Come on now, hustle up! Clock is ticking, let's go! Rootin' tootin', ready for shooting. <laughs> the pleasure to work with people that you trust and you can rely on and collaborate with instead of argue with or fight with. It was more of what's best for the film, what's the scene about. And there were things we tried and things that didn't work and then we went back to the drawing board and then there was things that John Lasseter wanted to try and the director wanted to try and Gary Wrightstrom wanted to try. So we had a lot of different people with different ideas, but ultimately it all worked out. But that's part of making the process is you have to try these things to see if it's going to work or not. And if you don't, then you're kind of missed out the opportunity of having all these very talented people working on it if you don't try their ideas. And some piece, you take one piece of an idea and put it with the other piece of the idea. And then sometimes ideas would all fall on the floor and we'd go back to the start. I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. You can't mess with the program, Ralph. You're not going turbo, are you? Turbo? No, I'm not going turbo. Come on, guys. Anytime we're inside a game, I was using plugins designed to kind of cut down the bit rate and going with actual 8-bit dialogue sound inside the games. Modified, of course, to make it actually work. Just because something's technically 8-bit doesn't mean it's going to be working for the ear. But we did do that. Same with the music. Funnily enough, the very first paid job I ever had was converting MC Kids from the arcade to the Commodore 64, which required, you know, I stayed up till 3 in the morning typing about nine li lines of code so that it would go, Eeh! And then, ooh, ooh, ee, ee, ooh, ooh, ee, ee. you know, just the whole the, the video game aspect of it, uh, where you've got characters like Pac-Man and Frogger, which may be retro to someone who's 10. But I mean, you know, I used to go to the fish and chip shop and put my 10p in in the UK so I could play. The, our composer, Henry Jackman, designed the music to be inside the game, very narrow, very thin. You know, that synthy sound we're all very familiar with, how these games were originally designed. And so we've got that. It wasn't like the whole film is going to sound 8-bit. It was really a sort of smattering of 8-bitness. But uh, it required a bit of research to get the sounds and to jog my memory. But with the technology you have now, it's not often the first thing you want to do to have an 8-bit sound, you know. So there were a lot of research was done to get hold of deliberately grungy, low-tech sounds. It also then had a nice knock-on effect into, I got really involved in getting some old synths going, like some Moogs and Roland Junos and Jupiter 6, all these classic analog synths, because they were somehow halfway between as not being completely strictly 8-bit on the one hand, and then not orchestral. There was a sort of middle ground of a lot of classic synths. So there was actually a lot of fun in resurrecting some really classic pieces of analog gear as well as the 8-bit sounds. It's make your mama's proud time! <laughs> <laughs> when these video games become so violent and scary, save me! Please get me out of here! And what was great about Wreck It Ralph is it was asking for it. You need the 8 bit stuff, you need Heroes Duty music, you need a King Candy theme, you need classic underscore, you need those emotional scenes in there that, that are a million miles away from 8 bit fun music, and it's all in the film. So therefore, it must all be in the music. What's your name? Uh, Ralph. 
Wreck-It Ralph. You're not from here, are you? No, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, not from right in this area. I'm just doing some work here. What kind of work? There's some routine candy tree trimming. Ralph is big. Ralph is a big character. And he's uh, he's got these monstrous hands. He's got these big bare feet. And he's kind of clumsy. He's big in every way. When he walks, he sounds like he's heavy. Anytime he puts his elbows on the counter, he has this weight to him. Anytime that he kind of pushes something or moves something, something big happens. It's all part of the contrast. You're just the bad guy who wrecks the building. Ah! I'm okay. I'm okay. Doom! They're gonna pull our plug! The Nice Landians, the characters that live in the Fix It Felix game, they are wonderful. They have a variety of great sounds that go with them. Typically, we try to make everything sound very, very natural and very real, but not too close mic so it sounds dry and unrealistic. Well, the Nice Landians in this world, we wanted them to sound as video game like as possible, but it's with all this wonderful foley, we actually wound up choosing the best two feet that worked. And when they hop, they have this great Gary Rydstrom design little ping that goes with them to remind you, as much as we are introducing these characters to you as people, they are code. When I first started working in the 7-1 format, did a lot of experimenting with dialogue and music and effects to see what would happen and how we can use it for the storytelling. And not just like when 5.1 came out and just everything's in the surrounds and therefore it must be a good mix. That doesn't apply. In our case, we were able to use past experience about what works and what doesn't work just by feel. If you're turning around or you're distracted for something that doesn't have anything to do with the story, you're in trouble, you're overdoing it. And to help keep the screen from getting too cluttered with everything piling up there, giving the movie some space and opening it up around us and involving us in it without having people turn around with things that were pointed you know, behind us or anything, but just moving things into this environment. That really helped because we were able to get power without overpowering people. Only you can save Nice Land. I can fix it. And be the hero. What it has going for it is heart. So it's gonna reach out to all ages because of that. You're invested in the characters right away. Every character has something to lose or gain, and you realize that early on. It's a real good team. It's a really good team. And Gary Rydstrom, who came in and gave us the oversight and had the real overall sound design of the film in mind and provided us with incredible tools to work with, he'd come in and work with us and give us his insight, and it was a real collaboration. The name of the game is fun, and we had a lot of it on this mix, and I think it reflects. I think that people will appreciate the amount of fun that we had doing it because it plays through the track. 